I think we're just about there. What we want to do is work all those bubbles out. We want to get those to the surface. We really don't want those bubbles in there. What's going on everybody and welcome back to another episode of Bee Fishing. So today we're going to be doing something a little different. I've been listening to you guys in the comments and y'all want to see more bait making videos. And that's what we're going to do today. I just had the 1000 subscriber giveaway. I just selected the winners and got to looking at my stock and realized I promised y'all to give y'all some homemade like bee fishing CB baits made shad paddle tails and I haven't I don't have enough so I'm gonna have to make some it's a very very simple process I'm gonna go over with y'all how we're gonna do it we're gonna chronicle it a little bit better than we've ever done on any of these bait making videos um, and uh, let me show you what I'm working with first and then we'll, we'll get into the intro so first off I use dead on plastics uh, dead on is this is their swim bait formula um, and I've got two cups um, already poured up and I'm letting it sit just to get all the air bubbles out of it before I start heating it up. Um, but it's already very well shaken. You've got to shake that stuff very, very well. I actually put some, if y'all can see that, I put some bolts in the bottom of it to help me shake that up better. Um, just a little tip if you uh, have trouble shaking that stuff up because they recommend you shake that up heavily. We've also got some Do It Plastisol hardener. Um, I put this in all of my swim baits um, just because it gives it more of a thump on the tail, which I really, really like and makes it hold together better. We've also got some Do It um, Worm Oil right there. Um, that's just a cup for my extra stirs, which are right there, those butter knives. Um, I've got two shooters. Um, we've got the swim bait cavity um, mold. It's a three cavity mold. We've also got my clamp to clamp that shut. I cannot do this without this protection. Um, this stuff right here on the plastisol definitely causes cancer. So we're definitely gonna use um, our mask. I do have some scent, some coffee shad scent, which we're gonna use on this. And then I've got all of my colors. I'm just gonna use white today because that's really predominantly what we're going for. We've also got some pearl powders. Um, we got some white glitter, silver glitter, and then some disco, which has a little bit of a green to it. It's got a little bit of a green, there's a bigger, so the other key to this is the microwave, which is right there, and our little laser pointer uh, to see what the temperature is. We wanna hit 350 on the first shot. Um, so we gotta hit that plastic off to 350 and it will turn uh, clear. And then we're gonna add our color. I know a lot of guys like to heat it up with color already in it. I'm not one of those guys. I wanna see it go clear and then get the color to my liking after it has gone clear. Um, that's just the way I do it. A lot of people do it differently um, to each their own. I don't care if I'm doing it wrong. If you think I'm doing it wrong, just save it in the comments. This is the way I've always done it. This is the way I'm gonna continue to do it. Last but not least, um, we've got on the Bass Cove, you may hear this in the background. I'm watching that uh, documentary on ESPN Plus called Miles to Go, which is about Les Miles getting started at Kansas because I just can't get enough football right now. I just can't get enough football. Um, that's the name of the game today. That's what we're going to do. Let's hit the intro. Let's go. All right. So what I'm going to start with is the Plastisol. We've got to hit the Plastisol, like I said, to 350 on the first run. There are just a little bit of bubbles there on the top. I'm gonna to stir those out, get this stirred nice and slow. That's the key is the slow stirring. Uh, just that nice white milky consistency. We're gonna hit this in the microwave probably two minutes the first time. And uh, then I'll back it down to about a minute and then 30 seconds every time. So let's do that. Two minutes. And uh, we should be at least be on the right path at that point. So what we're making is these, these three and a half inch Ripper by Do It paddle tail swim baits. Here's the mold, what it looks like. Just a nice little, little paddle tail. Um, this size is just big enough to go on like a hook. If you were gonna fish it like with a, just a, a weighted hook or you wanted to Texas rig it and have it die on the bottom or Carolina rig it, uh, but it's also small enough that uh, it goes really good on the back of a chatterbait, swim jig, um, really you can rig it in a ton of different ways. This is a really good size, three and a half. This is like the perfect size for throwing it back on the back of a swim jig or a chatterbait. And uh, 
That's what we're going to do today because I'm giving away a chatterbait in that box. So that's what we're making. One of the other important things I leave out, glove. You need a glove. This glass gets hot. Um, but see, it's still white. If we were to shoot this with our, our little laser temperature, right now we're at 177. So we've still got a little ways to go. Let's give this a gentle stir. Very gentle. And then we're gonna hit it in the microwave for another, I'm gonna go a minute and a half. All right, while that part's going for a minute and a half, oh, we still got a minute left on it. One thing I'm about to add now that we're about to cross the 200 temp mark, and you could have added this to begin with. Again, this is all just the way I do it. Um, and I have added this to the very beginning, but you can really add it at any time is the hardener. And I'm gonna add for one cup, I usually do for one cup, I normally uh, do one and a half of these. So we're gonna do three for two cups. Just basic math there. And now that this is about to go over 200 degrees, it's time to throw on the mask. So I'm going to be a little muffled. Um, but hopefully y'all still be able to understand me. I got a kid now. I got to, you know, not get cancer. All right, so let's check the temperature now. Two thirty-three after another minute and a half, so we're about a hundred off. I've already shaken the hardener up really well. One, two, three. All right, let's go another minute and a half. Y'all should see this. So it's not light anymore, it's starting to go, it's marbling. We need to stir that up and it will continue to get clearer and clearer and clearer until we finally are like super clear. Also, it's not watery, it's not watery anymore. It's actually getting thicker, like pretty thick there. So you know we're on the right track. Let's give it a little bit of a stir and then we'll check the temperature. All that, we're only at 261. So, we got a little ways to go. We're getting closer. So you might be asking yourself, why 350? Why is 350 the, the magic number? I probably won't shoot it at 350. I'll actually put it in the injector and put it in the molds where it's right around 300. But at 350, there's a chemical reaction that happens that really lets that stuff set. If you don't get it to a full 350, um, it's gonna be a little runny, a little sticky. It just will never completely cure into that traditional soft plastic feel that you're used to. So 350 is the magic number on, in my opinion, on dead on. A lot of guys go 375, 400, you're burning it. So don't ever go 400. Um, usually when I hit 350, all of it should be cured and I can back it down and then I just need to maintain shooting um, consistency, which is right around 300. So just gotta get it to that flash point basically, which we're getting really close. I think we're just about there. 359, we did it. And I want y'all to see this. So that's what it looks like. I mean, look at all the bubbles on the surface. That's totally normal. Look how runny it is again. It's going back to runny, but it's clear. And what we want to do is work all those bubbles out. We want to get those to the surface. And then when we shoot, those bubbles won't be in there. We really don't want those bubbles in there. So. Make slow circular stirs, don't stir too fast. Work those bubbles up to the surface so we can get rid of them. The only other way I know to get rid of those bubbles, a lot of guys use a vacuum chamber um, and they'll get like a five gallon vacuum chamber and uh, it'll get all those bubbles out for you. I'm not about that. As long as you work it nice and slow, you can get rid of those bubbles and it won't cause you a problem. Um, but that's what you gotta do. You just gotta work with it. Um, a lot of times, I did not do it this time, but I will shake that 
plastic the plastic saw up and pour it in my uh, my little Pyrex cup here and I'll leave it sitting for 30 minutes to get all the air bubbles out. This time I only gave it about five just so y'all can see if you ever do this on your own what it actually looks like and that's totally normal if you don't let it sit and let them get all the air bubbles out but it's those big micro bubbles and as you know when air gets hot it expands like it's just what it does so you get these tiny tiny micro bubbles from shaking up the plastisol and as you heat it up to 300 degrees those bubbles get bigger because they're hot when it cools down those bubbles will actually shrink back up and they won't be a problem but you want to get all of them out that you can while it's hot uh, just so you get a better consistency in your plastic. Alright, so I'm still letting some of the smaller bubbles get to the surface, but I've really parted. It's getting all up in the way. I've really kind of parted the C's a little bit on those big bubbles, got them off to the side. And we're going to start mixing in our colorant, so I'm going to point y'all down at the, the jug. Don't be alarmed by all the bubbles. Again, we're going to get all those out. Um, and really what you do when you insert this, the little injector in, if you push it below the surface, those bubbles are only on the surface, push it below the surface, about middle of the cup, and start sucking, you're not going to get any of those bubbles anyway. So I'm not too worried about the bubbles on top as much. Just clear your way so you can stir without stirring those bubbles back in. Um, and I'll show you what that looks like in just a second. And you'll see that the bubbles have calmed down significantly, but we're going to add our colors and our glitters in real quick just till we get it the color that we want. So let's do that. All right, guys, again, sorry for the muffled tones because I've got to wear this, this mask. Um, so let's clear these bubbles out of the way. Again, because it's cooling, uh, the bubbles are getting smaller. Like right now, we've already dropped about 15 degrees. So we're sitting at like 340 which is perfectly fine. I want to take my dead on plastics white, shake it up a bit, and I'm going to start with five drops. And just see where this gets me. Again, nice easy stirs. Don't mix back in those bubbles. All right, let's go five more. Let's go five more drops. Five more. Load it up in there, because we're making a solid color. We don't want it to be any kind of translucent color. That's getting better. Let's put a bunch more in there. Let's just load it up with a bunch of white. That's pretty good. That's a nice white right there. All right, let's talk glitter. I'm gonna start with silver. This is just gonna give it a little bit of a shine. See all those bubbles coming back up to the top? Let's just move those to the side just a little bit. So we're going to take silver, now, I don't know how much that is, but that much. This is a quarter of a teaspoon. So I know that looks like a lot, but when you mix it, really is not that much. That's about perfect. You don't want a whole lot, just a, a little bit of a, a glisten that those fish can pick up on. A little bit of a flash if the water's clear enough. Now we're going to add a little bit of this almost green, it's called Disco is the color. It's white, it's got a little bit of green in it. Y'all be able to see the green when I put it in there. Again, that's just to give it some of that natural green color that you would find in like a gizzard shad. I'm going to stir that all in there. And last but not least, just a little bit of dull white, almost like a scale. Not a whole lot of that, because it doesn't give a shine, it just gives some depth. Now that, right there is what I'm talking about. It's a good looking color right there, I'm happy with that. 
And now for the final, the final little step, this pearl powder. The pearl powder is going to do something incredible here and give it a nice little shine. Always be sparing with your pearl powders. I know that doesn't look like much, but watch what it does. Now look at that. Look at that shine to it. Now we got us a swim bait color right there. It's at 280, um, which is on the colder side, but let's shoot, a, let's shoot one right here. Take this guy, nice and lubed up, and I'll stuff him in there. And I'll suck some of that up just like that. All right, now that we've shot the first ones, I want to get that back in the microwave. So we're going to do that. There you go. Right there. So right there, hanging and curing, there's the first batch of those shad colors in white and a little bit of silver. So basically, Nathan and Dylan, uh, Nathan being the second place and Dylan being the first place winner of that thousand subscriber giveaway, that's half of one of y'all's bags right there. So. This is how I make my baits, um, and we're going to make a couple more, and then we'll wrap this video up. Alright, so the last of what I'm going to make today is already, it's been pushed, it's been shot, it's in right, right there, I'm just letting it firm up, as you can see. Still got a little bit left to go to firm it up in there. There is one and a half bags right there of swim baits. There's the second half of that second bag. That's all I'm gonna do today. Um, I've got another swim bait mold coming that is a duplicate of this guy. So I'll be able to shoot twice as fast. I'll be able to shoot two, um, one, basically one bag at a time, which is gonna speed up the process, which is I'm trying to get doubles of all of our molds now just to speed up the process because I don't have a lot of time. We've got to got a baby right behind that door right there so I don't have a whole lot of time to do this anymore so I'm trying to think smart not hard because I can't think hard so double the molds of everything so I can make them twice as fast I'm gonna come back out here I mean look at all the plastisol I have left I've got a whole bunch left in that cup it's almost full um, really doesn't take a whole lot to make those swim baits so, I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and as always, hit that like button, hit the subscribe button if you haven't already, and leave a comment below on any other of the molds that we have, if there's any other baits you want to see, any colors you want to see a tutorial on like this video, and I will get right on it, we'll try to make it happen. Um, and we're going to be back on the water very, very soon. I know the videos are set up now where it looks like I've been on the water, but I actually haven't been on the water in a couple weeks, and I am dying to break out those rods right there and their rod socks. Um, we've got to get those guys out of those rod socks and in the boat and back on the water catching fish. Um, so that's what we're going to do. So I appreciate the view, and you guys have a great rest of the week, and uh, we'll catch you on the next one. Later, guys.